Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day from 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Very easy to get the opening call. Come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see the opening call. Go to the newsletters. You'll see the opening call right in the top row. You can get the opening call for one month for $128. You can get it for six months for $5.95, which is a savings of $173. You can get it for a year for $9.95, which is a savings of $541. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Get everything to win and nothing to lose. Happy New Year, Basil. And a Happy New Year to you and to the entire TFNN team and to our listeners. Let's... Uh... As you like to say, let's make it a great one. That's right. 2020, man. Can you believe that? Uh, it's just hours. And oh, it's amazing, isn't God. it? God, seriously. 2020. I love it. But it's 2020, man. Holy cow. <laughs> the, re the reason why I like 2020 and the decades after that is when you look back, it's so much easier to say, what do you say in the zeros? You say back in the zeros, it just doesn't make sense. Or even back in the teens, once you say the 20s, <laughs> it's a number you can latch on to. But uh, yeah, no it, doubt. It has a ring. And we'll see all those folks that are going to be 20 years old this year or 40 years old. That is going to be kind of cool. So well. That's it. All right. Okay, so let's let's do it, Basil. Uh, Last day so of the decade. What are we going to do here? We're wrapping up the year, and it's uh, been a very strong year for all the indices. You know that in my work, I like to look at the fourth highest peak from the low bar, and I count the waves, and that fourth successive peak is called the peak D. You start peak A, and then peak B. Peak C is the third, peak D is the fourth. It can go higher, but it's at D that other things can happen. And you can see here, we made in the Dow 28,701, we made a peak D. So that's a warning to me to say, hey, got to be a little careful here. Uh, so for subscribers to my opening call, we actually took a position yesterday on the short side, just a starter position in the Dow. But, you know, I keep talking about this, how important it is in my work on the technical side, to, to look at the 9 and 14 period moving averages. And you can see there was a moment back uh, early December where there was that sharp decline. And we went from this high bar right here on the 27th of November at 28,174, plunged and gapped down. Big red candle goes underneath the black line. That's the 14 period moving average. The green line turns down and it plunges down to the 27,325 area on the third. And then it gaps up and it makes an island reversal and then gaps up again. And what's really important about this, you can see how close that green line came to crossing negative and that, for me, would have been a tip-off to say, yep, on the daily, at least, we've got a sell signal, okay. probably going to a sell mode, and it deflected higher. And look, it stayed higher all the way through. Now what I'm looking at is it's flattening out. and But it's still, to get this green line, this is the daily chart of the Dow. I could have anything up here, but I'm using the Dow for the moment. To get this green line to cut underneath the black line and change color to go pink, which means it's now in a declining mode, I would say you need, for, even from right here, where we're about unchanged at 28,450, I think you would have to drop at least 350 to 400 points to get that decisively okay. under it. I so see. to me, so that says at this particular moment, we've got some residual strength. That's all it's saying. And it says, if you want to be looking at the downside, you've got to be a little careful because there's, um, I'll, I'll call it selective technical support. There is still some residual strength. So what's fascinating about this is if I, can, if I go through the S&P, and the S&P right this moment, which was down sharply earlier on, now it's up too. You can see it held the green line. For this green line, which is even uh, stronger than the uh, Dow green line, that nine period moving average above the 14, it would have to go somewhere around here, 3190. So that's 30 points. So that's, you know, that's like the Dow, as I said, over 300 points down. So, so far, that's residual strength. So I'm anticipating that we're in the process of making some kind of a top on the shorter term, but it's not going to be an easy thing because 
there are still a lot of people that are, are looking at the upside and, and it needs to conclude. But at the same time, I'm, th I'm thinking that January is going to be a really choppy month. I believe it has limited upside in all the indices. And for the downside, it's step by step. So if the Dow had to close at any point in the next two weeks underneath 28,200, 28,000, under that support level, start to get back into the 27,000s, then the daily chart is saying, OK, it's now in a sell mode. And the weekly chart, you can see how strong it is. It's only at a peak C. So that has a lot of support all the way down to the 27,800 area. So I think it's going to be a process that starts in January, that we've got some kind of a topping action. It's not going to be easy for the bears, and I don't think it's going to be easy for the bulls. It's going to be sideways to very choppy. My thinking is it's going to be slightly lower highs after about early January, about the first or second week of January, and then start to increase with slightly lower lows, and then the lows just start to expand. So that's my outlook. And what's very important to me is today's actually the anniversary, exactly a year ago on the 31st of December last year, we bought a Bank of America. We've had other positions in it, but we still have a core position from the 24th. It's trading right now in the 25 area. So that tells me that as long as the banks are holding well, I think that is very important because the banks were dismissed for a very long time. But I think bookkeeping wise, they've done everything that the Fed is wanting them to do. And I, they will, every major market top has had something desperately wrong in the banking area. And at this particular point, I think we're headed towards that way, but they are still strictly doing things by the book. So I think they're okay. And I, and I think that. You can see by Bank of America, a very strong leg C at all-time highs in the monthly. I think that's a good sign. I'm waiting for Goldman Sachs to sort of get, get going and become a leader, as it has in almost every big major bull market. This is the first time Goldman Sachs is just on the sidelines. You remember, there yeah. was a year, I think there was a year that they had like three losing days or something. You remember when they that's were big right. traders? And what Basil's was talking about, three losing days in the trading business, folks. And that's like sick. Yeah. I mean, it's almost inconceivable. Mathematically, yeah. I don't even know how, what you could, what formula you'd use. But anyway, so they, they haven't been well, participating. They, they, yeah, just so that what happens there is that that's not like you and I or the people listening trading. What happens is that they get the auto flow coming in. They have the inside so story. So they're making, well, they get the auto flow in both ways. So they're making a spread. Right. So the, the banking system, folks, is a different type of trading. I mean, you know, they, 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 they hoping that they already have it sold before they even buy it. Correct. Yeah. So in other right. words, the position, they're kind of locked in the position yes. immediately. Right. That's right. The but that, there's no doubt that they printed money beyond belief. And, and that yeah. changed when there was a lot of legal action. But I suspect that they'll be back. And that, for me, would be a clue. Another big clue for this coming year is the IAI. And that's the iShares Broker Dealer Index. Uh, they, they haven't quite made an all-time high yet, 70.58 back in March of, last, of 2018. Come really close. And I think that we've got to keep our eye on that because if they start to break out, get to the 73s, I think a lot of the public will be coming back into the market. Right now, they're digesting big gains. Folks, we're kicking into 2020. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. Let's see, I, I'm going to speak to you in the next decade. How's that? Next decade, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, have a Basil, great, happy, thank happy you so year. much, man. Have a great one. Stay